Thank you, John, as well, for a perfect segue uh, because it is now two o'clock. We have begun recording. Uh, it's important we let everyone know we will be recording uh, this discussion. Uh, it will be posted up both uh, to our website and to our YouTube channel afterwards. And like uh, John mentioned, uh, the past and uh, that's a note for me to now's the time for that. I will mute everyone. Uh, so you proceed in doing that. <laughs> the, the mute alarm. <laughs> yes, so that's perfect. So I'm going to mute all the participants. Uh, from this point onwards, if you have questions, please um, submit them through the chat, uh, questions and comments. Again, I'll be hosting this. So I'll be monitoring the chat. Uh, I'll be watching and then I'll intervene uh, and pose the questions uh, to my colleagues uh, as needed. Uh, so Without further ado, I'm going to uh, let this go. I believe uh, Jeff or Rick is going to take the lead on this and uh, we'll begin. Yeah, we'll just take a, a quick follow up from where we were yesterday. I'm going to start off with a lesson plan again with new people here too. Um, if you need to access chat, you'll see on your when you roll your cursor on your screen, you'll see a bunch of little buttons in there and chat is the one that looks like a little cartoon bubble. So that's how you get to the chat. Um, as yesterday, we introduced the lesson plan. So today we're going to start off in the same place. Again, uh, we didn't change the title a whole lot today. Uh, we're still looking at structuring lessons. Um, so, and really this applies to us more than anything else, is that we've made our first attempt uh, at delivering an online lesson. This is day two and the next one is looming. So that's where we were this morning. So this became our lesson plan. Um, creating some elements of a distance delivery class so students can participate in the lesson was some feedback we got from yesterday. So that is our objective. And again, really a pre-assessment and, you know, if people want to, chime in in the chat is what elements have you used that have been successful? So what have you used to create these lessons or doing anything in any success stories that other people could see through the chat? So as we get into our participatory learning, we're going to start off with Tim and he's going to follow up with what he did yesterday. So I'll stop sharing and let Tim take over. OK, so when I took over yesterday, I kind of felt like you all probably will feel when you actually go and get your your students in front of you um, kind of a um, I don't know I want to say improv but it's an on the spot kind of a deal that you're doing now because two weeks ago you didn't have any idea you're going to have to be developing and talking to your students online so having said that you know what I showed you yesterday I went back and looked at it again after the uh, I guess after the event and um, it's kind of clunky. It wasn't perfect. It didn't even really kind of get the idea that I, I walked into the room with um, trying to convey. So what I wanted to do today is to say that after after reviewing that, you know, uh, I could have been kicked to the ground and thought, man, I'm never going to be able to do this or get back up and actually find a better way of doing it. So I have put meat on the bone, as we said. I've taken kind of what we talked about yesterday, and I'm going to show you here real quick. So let me do two things here. So for those of you that weren't here yesterday, yesterday we went through how to build a lesson plan to teach remotely. We explained it, we went through the, the motions, and then we, we really went through and, and built one, and that's what uh, Tim is referring to here uh, today. And again, the documents that we used yesterday and the documents that we'll use today will all be posted up on the website. So first of all, you can see my screen. Looks like my folder's open. Yep. Absolutely. Okay, perfect. So yesterday we, we did kind of a, an impromptu video of a, how to do a voltage drop test. And I had a, a trainer out here and had a camera and an aerial view. And, and uh, we talked about different ways of, of student engagement. And if I stood there and, and showed you how to do it, um, that's like a lecture and, and students, you know, don't get it. They don't get it when you're in front of them half the time, you know, through a lecture. They definitely want to do hands on. We've been uh, our hands are tied. We can't do that now. So we came up with the idea yesterday kind of corporately that um, you as an instructor can be their hand. So you've got your camera on on the lesson you're trying to teach and you let them kind of tell you what to do. So, you know, we would have probably created a video of our students uh, providing input on how to actually do a voltage drop test. And you would have been their hands and we would have videotaped it. Everyone would have discussed it. It would have been um, hopefully a, a, a learning experience. <clears throat> and then um, 
I guess their 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 buy-in is that they 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 kind of help create that particular video. Then, my point would be that you follow up with, um, uh, I guess, a, a way to assess that they got what um, you were talking about yesterday. So, <clears throat> in front of you, you see after we hung up yesterday, I went ahead and kind of took some videos. I guess there looks like there's probably a dozen of them or something like that that I took and put it into a, uh, a an editing deal. I did this with a webcam. We talked quite a bit yesterday about the fact that, you know, you're, you're uh, probably, the, Jeff says all the time, your best camera is the one that's in your hand. And you could do this with a, a phone. I just wanted to kind of play it, I guess, to the next level and tell you that it's not that difficult to use some of the software editing tools. We could have a class on that later if you would like, but for right now, I wanna show you. These are the little clips right here that I took yesterday. Um, I went to iMovie, which is an Apple product, and I have a, a Mac computer, and, and actually kind of stitched together this, this video. So this is kind of what it looks like. And, and if you've never been into a, a photo editing or movie editing um, software, it's kind of overwhelming to look at. And I didn't really want to dwell here, but I, I wanted to show you what it looks like. So having said that, first thing I did was come up with a storyboard. And I sat down and decided, what do I want to achieve with this particular lesson? And, and it was to have students uh, successfully um, know the difference between probably the two types of voltage drop um, methods. And so I, I just did a really quick storyboard of, of the, the views that I wanted, <clears throat> what I wanted to say, the script, about how long it was going to take, and then any extra notes about the camera. I wanted to actually reach over there and turn the light on and off while I was videotaping it. And this one, I wanted to show amperage, voltage, and, and resistance. And so I just kind of got myself an outline so I wasn't totally um, just banging around with the camera. And then I went back and actually, you know, in all honesty, I, I took all of these, these little individual deals based on that storyboard, okay? So follow me so far. I want to show you what it looks like. So I put it together in iMovie. I didn't put any sound on it for a reason. You can put sound on it, but for right now, this is going to be, um, I'm creating this for the quiz that we're going to um, go to next and show how to assess it. So this was, it's two minute video. I figure we have the time today to, to watch it real quick, but this is kind of what it looks like. I ask, what's a voltage drop? I give the definition. I ask what actually has to be in place to do a voltage drop. Illustrating the fact that we can, you know, turn on and off voltage and I've got my meter hooked up to read it. And in this case, you can actually read the meter today. I mean, because I was set up a little bit uh, ahead of time here. <clears throat> checking amperage and then checking resistance. So I'm just really summarizing what we probably corporately as a class would have uh, um, come up with yesterday while we were creating that that kind of free form video that we were going to do. So you have to have all three. How do you measure um, voltage drop? How do you actually do it? Well, let's back up and stop. What's first things first? Kind of make sure you have a good battery. So I always I just got that ingrained in my uh, in my students head that I want them to, to check, check source voltage before they do any testing. And they're at 12 six are good to go. So now. And Go ahead. I was just going to interject for a second here because there are a couple comments and I wanted to also point out that one of the things we're doing here that, that we show and we, we showed yesterday uh, and it's really a key in all of this is each time that we're doing this part of the, the biggest key to success is having that basic plan, uh, whether it's a notes on a napkin, whether it's a, a well written storyboard that makes all the difference. We do a lot of videos at Conslab. We do a lot of short videos like this as well. And just getting your thoughts down on the paper, writing out that little storyboard, whether it's chicken scratch or not, makes it so much easier to do so. And this is very easy to demonstrate how you guys could do this yourselves. Again, of course, we're going to use the Conslab product and there's comments in the comment thread about you could use uh, other console yeah, products, you could use sure. anything. You you could do this. The example we gave yesterday, Jeff did it on his car. Um, and so I just want to say that the, the, the one of the biggest takeaways, I think, for a lot of uh, people that attended yesterday is the basic plan, both the lesson plan and the uh, video storyboard plan to go with that. Sorry, interrupt him. So, and, and again, this isn't about me and my, my uh, skills with videoing. It's a matter of me wanting to have something to um, provide my students. So th this is something you can do. I'm, I'm not any um, wizard by any means. So, 
and and I did all this by uh, trial and error. I probably made more mistakes. You know, they say if you learn from mistakes, and I'm a uh, iMovie you know wizard by now. So, so did the storyboard, did the video, and now I'm going to take it and actually turn it into. Remember, I, I mentioned play play uh, pause it yesterday, which is a free app. Uh, they they have a I guess a, a for pay level, but I like kind of playing in the free part because that seems to fit everybody's budget better than for pay. There's a whole lot more you can do with the for pay, you know, and um, if you want to challenge your schools to be getting you better tools to equip you for doing distance learning, that's your that's your call. But I want to show you right now. I've got three videos in here that I've worked on in the past. I want to pull up the one that we just looked at. I'm going to do um, preview. And I'm going to show you what it would look like if the students and and play play pose it pause it has a way of putting this into a student. Um, you create a class, you put it into their their um, I guess uh, classroom. They go and view it. They see a different view than than you would as an instructor. And and I'm going to show you some of the LMS ways of tracking the responses on this too. So this is the same video. This is in the, in the the uh, the play pause it app. And the cool part about it is that you can stop it and make ask students questions. You can stop it and it won't get started. OK, same video it runs along, says what's a voltage drop and bam, it stops and a, a window box comes up on the side over there that has questions that they have to answer. They have to correctly answer that it's the loss of voltage by passing current through a resistance. They submit it. They get the green light continue. Fair enough. I'll hit it again. You can see it down on the bottom cursor. There's little dots, and that'll be the, the, the amount of times that I've put a question in there. And so I've stopped the, stopped the video, and they have to respond before they can pass. So what are the three players? Bam. And then I give them this time as a multiple choice. There's, there's multiple ways of doing this. So I'll just say I'll answer it right for right now but i want to do one wrong here in a second so oh and i miss current flow so they would know that a, a couple things to to note here that uh, we've seen both and i know other uh, team members have done this and we we had um, uh, other uh, attendees mentioned this yesterday and we've seen this at, at various customers and schools is that the the best tools and the best software that you can use is the ones you got, the ones that you already know, uh, the ones that you're familiar with. There are going to be a hundred thousand other tools out there for you. Uh, we're going to we're going to fall back on the ones that we use the best. Um, so we've seen it in the past, and we've seen other examples. Uh, whether you film this with your your pocket camera, your your pocket computer, cell phone, or your webcam. Or what have you? There is instructors. There are instructors out there that share the videos with their students either through their LMS, either through whether it's a, a messaging service through email. However, you share the video. Don't always get hung up thinking that you need to show the video in this manner through a, a webinar. We're doing this as an example to show you guys how you can do it. Um, but sharing these little bytes of information of technology, there's going to be tons of different manners and whatever works for you is going to be the one you know best that you're comfortable with and that you're going to be able to actually do. Don't get hung up in 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 picking the right technology. Uh, there's a couple other comments that I wanted to bring up um, and, and ask you, Tim. Um, the idea uh, of having your students do these types of video to send them back to you. Uh, to have a performance or grading, and that ties into another question. So, so one is, can we have students do these types of videos? How would we do that? Uh, and then the other question uh, is specific uh, to a specific state where um, there's now talk that the online learning, uh, that instructional, it, it, the, the online learning does not count or does not meet the instructional time requirements. That might be a question for a little bit later uh, with uh, wow, all yeah. of our uh, colleagues, but that'd be another challenge. There's going to be individual obstacles depending on your state, your school system, uh, wherever you are, you're going to have different obstacles in front of you, but uh, we'll have to discuss that a little bit later. So, so yes, I would, uh, and I used to uh, challenge my students to make their own videos. I would show them a little bit how, and and then let them figure. It. They're they're pretty tech savvy, and and I would, uh, I wanted them to produce videos, and and we actually even um, kind of had video contests. Um, man, you learn a lot. We and, and as instructors, you know too. You learn a lot when you have to teach it, and and when you write a script and you do a video, you really kind of get it down. Especially if you 
do multiple takes because you're compulsive like I am. You know, you're gonna you're gonna basically kind of like just repetitively go over the same context and, and you're gonna get it. So yes, make them do it. Now now my goal out of this deal, um, you know, we're in different times, you know, and, and I would love to see, you know, I'm giving you an example here and, and we're gonna point you to the resources and and we're gonna, you know, um, send you all out of here with a you know pat on the back and, and say challenge you to try this yourself i would love to see in the next few weeks you guys starting to submit movies too and then and then you know we need to we need to because time is of the essence um maybe focus on the classes that are having to be completed between now and the end of the semester and you know should students come back how can we prepare them for being ready to hit the ground running with the actual hands-on stuff that they want to do when they get back so if if somebody is teaching electricity, you know, as a wrap up of a semester and this video here would help, then use it. And, and you know, I'll put it on our resource page and use it. If you make one that you think is, you know, helpful, let's start pulling our resources here. There's no point in everybody doing something different. But when it's all said and done and we go back to the classroom, uh, man, I'd love to continue talking to you about different ways to deliver um, uh, you know, the flip classroom team base and things like that, where all of this stuff, um, your your skills that you learn in this time of crisis are going to be carried over into your classroom even when we're back uh, um, breathing fresh air again. So, And if I could Fair segue enough. off of what Nathan mentioned, Tim, uh, we're going to talk about closing the loop here uh, sure. uh, probably after we go to Rick for a second uh, and okay. show a student report out. Yeah. Okay. Well, one, one last thing real quick. On the very back page of the play play posit is all the uh, LMSs that they integrate with too. So this isn't just a standalone deal. There are some rules I'm sure that some schools have. And uh, um, while I think this is a time to bend or break rules um, just because of the position that we're put in, um, this would be a great way to advertise uh, to your faculty or to your administrators that what you're doing um, can fit into their program too. So, okay, um, I'm done rambling. Hopefully that helped and we'll move to Back to Rick or somebody. One of the questions that came up in uh, some of the discussion was, uh, how do you get the videos to your computer and things like that to manipulate them? You know, uh, iOS world, um, probably pretty easy. But um, one of the things that if you got an Android phone, um, you know, use your Gmail account. They, they Google will play well. Um, so just quickly here, I was going to show. Um, I'm going to share this so in my google account you know any video i take on my phone ends up in this google account as long as i've got my sharing turned on and uh you know you can really get some pretty high definition video i don't know how it'll show up through all of the this but uh you know you can just go in and uh get some assistance and you know this is being handheld so it is a little shaky but we were just uh doing a demo trying to talk about valve overlap and in this situation you may see there is none you know so uh quite easily done and you can go and get those videos and take them into any software you want manipulate them you know create yourself a, a library uh the other cool thing is sometimes you need to really zoom in on something um you know uh connectors those types of things it's a great tool to have anyway you know, next thing we're gonna you do is said uh, sorry i just wanted to interject something real quick you said library and, and when i was a teacher at osu uh we started doing these videos and i wanted a gopro camera and the automotive department wasn't going to buy one so i went to our librarian and they had all types of video equipment that they that they would loan out and i said do you have a gopro and she goes do we need one and i said well heck yeah and they bought one and then i went and checked it out and probably kept it for six months but long story short is there's ways around you know um saying no and uh, um the gopro the gopro is a hoot to use in a, in a um yeah. learning environment go ahead sorry this is this is another point that i'll underline Maybe Rick, you might have been making the same point, but that uh, we're seeing and we see even uh, in some of the comments here, you know, looking at what tools your school, your school system already has that may be available. A lot of times you don't know what you have 
at your fingertips that you can either borrow from the library or that the school already has a subscription or that the IT department already has support for. So this is an excellent time to reach out to those resources within your school to find out what do you guys have to help? It never hurts to ask. We saw a lot of examples of that in the past discussions of, oh, I didn't know I had this. Oh, I didn't know we had this service or this uh, technology or a GoPro in the library that I could borrow out. So I just wanted to interject with that. Just to show how quickly it happens, I took this picture just as the seminar was starting and it's already in my Google file. So anyway, that's my share. And now we're going to go back to the lesson plan and go to Jeff and he's going to talk about closing the loop. How do we get the students involved? So, you know, in learning, we talk about, uh, you know, we build build a lesson. Uh, we do it, what happened, and so what? And in the so what, we need to hear from the students. Uh, and then we plan for the next class. We, won't, we don't want to keep doing things that don't reach our students. And I've really found that I have learned a lot uh, from my students when I had them both do uh, learning logs or learning blogs and uh, videos to uh, show me what the work has been. And, you know, I like to say we do a lot of uh, thinking about demonstrating to our students, but why don't we put a little more thought about having our students demonstrate to us? And uh, I've been doing this for years. Some of the links you'll see here are not new, uh, but they're still very pertinent. So what I'm going to show you here is is how I went about that. How people say, well, how did you get the students to to do this? Well, it was an assignment, it, and it was part of what we did. So I'm going to scroll down to. There's links here. Uh, I've updated some of these things, uh, but the learning portfolio, the students decided. You know, we we made it an assignment, and I had them vote on when the due date was going to be, and the due time. And I wanted to be very exact about this. So they all decided that it was the due date was going to be Monday night at 1159 PM. Now, I would have preferred Saturday night so that I could grade over the weekend and be ready for Monday morning. But it, it was their decision. This is a big part of having the student own this, having the team own it, let them decide. So uh, in the requirements, and this was uh, Difficult to, I won't say it's, well, it wasn't easy to build. Let's just say that because um, I had to teach the students how to reflect. I had to teach the students how to, how to keep a running total of hours, hours to date, um, you know, hours per month, hours per quarter, uh, time hours. I'm trying to get them to think about time, time on task, um, and to put that down. And then a reflection of what you learned this week. Pick, pick one thing. And you know, the students are really good at making a list of what they did, but in order to get them to think about what they learned, uh, I wanted some real thought at that. So here are some uh, resources available. Uh, to make that happen. And one of the resources I, that I have was of a second grade class who blogs. This teacher has their second grade class do learning logs. And I decided that, you know, if second graders could do it, the adults could probably do it as well. Um, that now, Jeff, not everyone, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm wrong, but not everyone has experience with uh, these types of methods of having your students uh, write a blog or do individual learning logs or assignments in that way. Could you give a very brief, uh, uh, simple explanation of what that is? Okay, so a learning log would be something where the student reports out their work. So, um, a photo or a video each week. Uh, many of you, uh, Rick showed Google. Google is a great place to uh, uh, gather that all together. Uh, Some place the students could send their video to you. Some place through your learning management system. 
Many learning management systems have learning logs in it where they can operate there. Uh, that's more of a, a mechanics of the, the system uh, that, that we really can't tell you too much about. But in the, uh, the report out, you ask for certain, certain things. Uh, you s set certain standards. So I wanted a photo or a video each week, and then they would be graded on the following. And you can look at those different things. I don't need to go through those. I think uh, we also posted up uh, on the website one of the uh, learning logs that you had shared uh, yesterday. So uh, we'll be mm -hmm. able to give examples of that. And you guys could even grab that as a template uh, yeah. and uh, use that as an example. It's important. It's another thing that came up. It's, it's important to think about ways that we can ask the students to participate and to yes. submit the content in a different way. I know that the the hands on portion of it, we know that it's very it's very difficult to do that when you don't have the hands. You can't do it hands on when you're not there or they don't have it in front of them. But asking them to participate and submit in that way is uh, another best practice that you guys can can take away from this and, and try to use uh, in this time. So this document will also be uh, posted up uh within those i i just put that together this is very simple screen grabs and and links uh i mentioned to, and i'll i will also put an example of a learning log in there i didn't get that in there uh, this morning uh, but here is a video of uh, of uh, a wheel bearing adjustment that uh, now i looked this morning miles has got ninety-five thousand hits on this video <laughs> So you had your student post his video to YouTube? Yes. Yeah. That's how I, I, I made a private channel on YouTube and the students yeah. all posted to there. That's, that's, that's another one great really example. Easy. Yeah. And I think that that's what we're doing with these videos. And I think that we'll do that more and more as we get these other smaller videos, even the ones that Tim's created that you've created, Jeff, that we'll post those up to share to generate this more content that you guys can can use and take back to your classrooms. Uh, and use even tomorrow well, on Monday. Yeah, yeah. So, if there are any other questions I can address in the uh, in the chat, Nathan, I would be happy to do that now. But otherwise, I'll stop sharing. Okay, nothing particular for that. Okay. Uh, can let I me say that that, oh. that that let me say that anything worth doing is worth measuring, and assessment to me is not testing. Assessment I do yes. every minute of every day. Everything I see, I assess. Uh, and when a student shows me work, I can assess that work. Um, in a video like this, five, six minutes, he did the job. You know, he was innovative about it. You know, there's others I can show that sometimes maybe we're a little too innovative with heavy metal music in the background or whatever else. I didn't really care. They were doing the work and they were demonstrating the work. So that's all I've got with this. Perfect. <clears throat> Nathan, can I pop in with just a real quick? Absolutely. Bookmark, just a bookmark to show them. <clears throat> so we showed you a lot of stuff this week. Our front page looks like this. If you go to this tab up here and click on resources, pretty much everything that we that we're doing this week is going to be posted here. And then some we've got some other resources down at the bottom that have always been up there anyway. But the video that I made today, um, the, the sheet that I made um, yesterday there. Yeah, it's just a little bit higher. That there. has all the yeah, it has all the links to play play pose it and to um, just a lot of stuff is on there too. So um, when you're sitting around this weekend contemplating, you know, how to uh, um, what you want to do, there's we've, we're giving you room to do it. So or giving you a place to do it, I mean. Sorry, my wife came in right in the middle of all that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, and I think this this points out something else too, that if some little glitch like that happens, we're all human, right? We're all human. I mean, Nathan's wife, got two kids can, yeah. and two dogs, uh, <laughs> and they, they, they really like him. I've seen them. You know, <laughs> probably for the next two weeks, they're the only friends he's gonna have. Uh, <laughs> or two months, who knows, right? So sad. Yeah. Let's, we may as well make light of it and do the best we can. You know, the worst thing we could do is to do nothing. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, so 
in closing, did you have a? Uh, yeah, just the last yeah, thing. Uh, our post assessment is really: Have you seen anything that you can use for your new classes? So, uh, again, if you want to make comments or whatever, let us know. Uh, are we going the right right way? What else do you want to see? Uh, really, the summary then is: Don't get overwhelmed. So seek help with anything new you're trying to create. There are virtual communities that help, and that's our summary. Uh, okay. Could I just add one thing? We're looking for your input as well. Show us what you've done. You see the format that we've done here. Bring us a four or five minutes of something that we can show and you want to share with the rest of the group and, and we'll, we'll have the open mic. Perfect. Just in closing, I just want to say, and yes, uh, one of the questions is, will we be around next week? Yes, we will be continuing this uh, as long as we can. Uh, we were going to, we will be continuing. We have already uh, many uh, potential future topics, um, and we're open to having uh, any other ideas. You guys could uh, submit topics either uh, through the chat here, through email. You could even uh, post up a video on YouTube uh, with the discussion with your ideas, uh, generating that content that we can share amongst all of these instructors, all of you out there that, that need a bit of help. We all, we're all in this together. Some of the, the potential future topics that we've thrown around uh, include uh, teaching uh, Ohm's Law remotely, uh, doing a guided class uh, using online courseware with, uh, again, we would fall back to what we know best with Electude and with console lab hardware, of course. Um, you know, uh, teaching lighting systems uh, remotely, how to teach breaks and other hands-on classes, you know, without the hands-on portion.